nothing more nerve-wracking than when somebody's backing up in the spot next to you. Even though he had plenty of room. How's that for an exciting Monday morning? Let's see if I can get this camera set up a little bit so I don't have to hold it. And Bob said, let there be light. Well, it's Monday morning. I am in West Palm Beach at Costco. Uh, my appointment is 9 a.m. and I got here at 5.30 because I knew that they would have plenty of parking and because the way convoy and the shipper and receiver scheduled the load that's the way it just it had to be done. I wish they would have scheduled the pickup for a couple of hours later. But, you know, they want to give you a little extra time in case you run into any problems, which I understand, but it would be nice to not have to start my clock so early because they've got a pickup of a load of pallets scheduled for, I believe it's 11.30 anywhere from 11.30 a.m. to like 5 p.m. today. So, unless Costco gets me out of here early, like super early, and Publix in Deerfield Beach loads the pallets really, really fast, and I can get out of there and find somewhere to park, there's really no way to do this load without breaking the law. But I needed the money so bad after OTR leasing screwed me so bad, I had to take it. I mean, I just, I couldn't turn it down. So, yeah, it sucks. And especially with my situation with my air conditioner not working when I'm idling, there's zero chance I'm going to be able to get any sleep in the daytime in South Florida. It's just not going to happen. So... I can have, you know, I got two choices. I can either try to follow the law and go park somewhere for 10 hours and not get any sleep and sweat to death. Or I can just drive home and avoid the way station like I normally do anyway, but, and hope nothing happens and sleep in my own bed tonight because yeah, one is the legal way to do things, and one is the safe way to do things. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's safe. If I sit here in this truck for 10 hours, and I can't get a minute's sleep because it's South Florida during the daytime, and it's, it's supposed to be in the 90s today, which means it could be you know, 110 degrees inside this truck, there's no chance I'm going to get any sleep. So it's either I follow the law and go park somewhere for 10 hours and then drive back up to Jacksonville tonight without getting any sleep, having been up all night last night driving down here and then all day today and then all night driving back and then delivering my load of pallets tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then by the time I would get home and be able to actually get a moment's sleep, it would be Tuesday after late afternoon. So the legal way would have me go without sleep from Sunday night to Tuesday afternoon. That's the legal option. The safe option is screw the logbooks. If I'm not tired, I'm gonna drive because it doesn't do me any good to sit here for 10 hours and not get any sleep. You know, it's like, I understand the whole point of the driving hours and, you know, they want you to be able to get some sleep and whatever, but in a situation like this, 
you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You can choose the legal way or you can choose the safe way. I got tons of sleep yesterday because I kind of knew what I was getting into with this load and I knew that there was no way I was going to get any sleep. So I got as much sleep as humanly possible yesterday. I'm, I'm well rested. I'm not tired at all. So really my only option is to get empty here at Costco, drive down to Deerfield Beach at Publix, pick up a load of pallets, start heading north. By that time, I'm pretty sure I'm already going to be over my 14 hours. So if I'm feeling fine, then I'm just going to keep going because it's not going to do me a damn bit of good to stop for 10 hours if I'm not going to be able to get any sleep. That's just going to make me drive Monday night in at nighttime when you're more tired naturally when I haven't been you know I haven't had any sleep yet you know what I'm saying so yeah it sucks I have to break the law but in this in this case in this particular situation the legal option is not the safe option and that's what sucks about the government making these laws is they take the decision making out of the hands of the person that's closest to the situation which is never a good thing so and it's sad that you know we as truck drivers can't be trusted to make the correct decision on when we're tired and we need to sleep you know even though there's no way in hell I could get any sleep in this truck today during the day if I don't feel like I can do it I won't I won't drive I'll have to figure out, you know, I figure sitting here, maybe I might be able to fall asleep for like a half an hour, I don't know, take a short nap, or maybe later tonight when the temperature starts to come down, if I could get, you know, two hours of sleep before I have to head out again, maybe that would be better, but I really think that as long as I know how I feel, and as, if I feel like I am not too tired to drive, then that's just what I'm going to have to do. I have no other choice. Because it doesn't make any sense at all for me to sit here for 10 hours and sweat to death. And then after sitting in a hot truck all day long, have to start driving at night and drive all night long when you're exhausted from sweating all day in a hot truck, you know? If you think about it, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But we'll see. Uh, I'll let you know um, how it goes here at Costco. They're kind of busy, but not as busy as they were the last time I was here. So I'm, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of empty doors. So I'm, I'm really hoping they get me in before my appointment time. That way... You know, maybe be empty at like 9, 30, 10 o'clock and then roll on down to Deerfield Beach after morning rush hour traffic. That would be the best possible scenario. But we'll see. I'll let you know how it goes. Welcome back. Pardon the uh, mask beard face. Worst thing about those masks, they mess up my beard. Um, Costco was way too fast. I got a door at 7 o'clock. I had a 9 o'clock appointment. But they put me in a door at 7 and I left there at 7.45. Now mind you, I had a full trailer full. It was a, um, the load weighed 40, 43,000 pounds. And by the time I bumped the dock to the time I left the gate, 45 minutes. Now you tell me why can't everybody do that? 
Costco does it pretty much every time. It's amazing. But they got done too fast, so I didn't miss the uh, morning rush hour traffic in South Florida. I was hoping they would take a little bit longer today so I could miss most of the, the heaviest traffic. But no, I was stuck right in it. People drive like idiots down here. But I made it over here to Publix in Deerfield Beach. Um, gotta say, I like the way they do the pallets up in Jacksonville a lot better than this place. It's a lot more laid back, easy going. The, um, where they have you back into this dock is pretty insane. You, uh, you come around the building from that direction right there. And then you come down, you're going this way. And you gotta go out that way and then back up into here in this little special dock area where they do the pallets and stuff so it's not the most difficult dock to back up into but definitely not the easiest um, then they make you disconnect from the trailer pull out from under it Jacksonville doesn't make you do that you stay connected to the trailer and they load you and you're out of there and in Jacksonville the guy that does the paperwork is right there you know the office is right there inside the door here you've got to walk halfway through the whole entire warehouse to the to get to the office to get your paperwork. And of course, this being South Florida, hardly anybody speaks English, so they were telling me all these things to do, and I couldn't understand a word they were saying. But they've already got all the pallets, looks like, lined up behind there and ready to ready to put them onto the trailer. So this shouldn't take no more than 15 minutes, maybe a half an hour at the most. And then I still have like four hours left on my clock, so I'm just going to go as far as I can. And really, I don't know, if I'm feeling good, I'm just going to go all the way to Jacksonville because it's only a six-hour drive. So if I break the law by two hours, I'm already breaking the law anyway, so what's the difference? If I drive that extra two hours, I'll be much safer than I would be if I stopped somewhere for 10 hours and didn't get any sleep and then continued to drive on to Jacksonville. Like I said before, in this situation, there's the legal choice and then there's the safe choice. And unfortunately, in my situation, they aren't the same choice. So, uh, but I'll check in with y'all later, let you know how it went. Welcome back to a trucking journey. It is Tuesday morning at 9.55. Uh, let's see, where did we leave off? Um, yesterday, went to Publix in Deerfield Beach to pick up a load of Chep pallets. And I think I filmed that, yeah. They were fairly quick. Um, my appointment time wasn't until like noon, until 5 p.m. anytime. And like I said, I got there really early and I was out of there by 10 a.m. So they took maybe half an hour, 45 minutes or something. So that was really good. Um, missed most of the rush hour traffic coming back out of South Florida you know by the time I left there at 10 o'clock it was still crazy because it's South Florida but it wasn't nearly as bad as on the way down to Publix um, came back up and after a 13 hour day and driving all those miles I wasn't sleepy tired but I was tired exhausted tired like and my back was killing me. 
So I stopped in Vero Beach at the Howard Johnson, got me a room for the night. Instead of uh, going on back to Jacksonville and risking driving over my hours, you know. I could have made it, I wasn't sleepy at all. But I was pretty worn out and I made good money on this load. So spending a little bit to get a good night's sleep, eh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Cause it was 92 degrees and there was no way I was gonna get any sleep in the truck without air conditioning. So it's either drive back to Jacksonville illegally or get a motel room. So I got a room, so I was able to get a really good night's sleep. Um, left there really early this morning, came on up to Jacksonville. Um, when I come back from South Florida, I always get off in Ormond Beach and cut through the woods to come up to Jacksonville. Number one, because you avoid the way station in Flagler Beach, Palm Coast area. But number two, I-95 through St. Johns County is just as crazy as South Florida. And especially morning rush hour traffic headed into Jacksonville. It's insane. So, came up through the woods, through the Ocala National Forest. Saw a uh, dead bear cub on the side of the road that got ran over last night. Um, it wasn't there the night before when I went down that way, so yeah, that just happened. So that was pretty sad. But then a couple miles down the road, I saw a full-size bear run across the, the road in front of me. It was way down the road in front of me, so it wasn't like I was in any danger of hitting it or anything, but it was kind of cool. All the miles I've driven all over Florida and I passed by a million bear crossing signs. I've never seen a bear until this morning, and I see two of them in one morning. One of them just happened to be run over, but two in one morning, that's, that's crazy. But um, came over here to the uh, Chet Pallet place in Jacksonville. Got checked in on the little kiosk there. And now I wait for them to uh, text me and tell me what door to back into. Um, there's quite a few trucks here, but I also see quite a few empty dock doors. So hopefully they can uh, get this uh, off the trailer here pretty soon. My appointment isn't until 11 a.m. So I'm like an hour early, which is good. Hopefully the uh, string of good luck on these appointments for this trip will continue and I'll get out of here before my appointment time. That would be awesome. Then I gotta head back to Unilever, drop off this empty trailer, and then I'm going home. And uh, today, Wednesday and Thursday, is the annual DOT inspection blitz, which is the annual let's screw the truckers drive where DOT is looking to do as many inspections as they can they got to fill their quota and since they canceled it last year because of the Kung flu I have no doubt they're gonna try to make up for that lost revenue this year so I have every intention of sitting at home until Friday because y'all know my situation I don't really need to be inspected right now if you know what I mean but if I see something that I think I can get away with doing and it pays me well enough to make it worth the risk I might take a load but we'll see as of right now I have no intention of working until Friday at the earliest because it would be just my luck I would get pulled over and inspected because you know during this annual DOT blitz that they do I'm sure that they are looking for trucks trying to avoid the way stations on the back roads and they will pull you over so 
you know, normally when you try to get around a way station, it's, you're, you're taking a somewhat of a slight risk, but during the inspection blitz, I think they're looking for guys going around the way station to avoid the, the inspectors, inspectors. So it might be a smart move to just stay home, even though I could really use the money. Um, I've got enough in stuff that hit my the the stuff I got paid for this morning and once I get paid for this load that I'm on um, that paid my rent and my truck payment and my fuel card payment will be paid for this week with this trip that I'm on so I can afford it you know I can afford staying home for a couple of days, but it would be nice to be able to make a little bit of money. Maybe if I can get like an Alachua trip, I might take that. Um, but hey, shout out to uh, Canal Insurance is who I have my truck insurance through. And they have this, they, they call it the Canal Test Drive Program where they track how many miles you drive in a month and that's what they base your payment on. So if you don't do a whole lot of miles, you don't have to pay an outrageous fee for the insurance that month. And so far it's been working out pretty good for me. I just got my bill for this month and like last month it was $1,400. Um, Cause I did a little bit more miles than the month before. But this month's bill is only $800 because I didn't do as many miles in April as I did in March. So not having that high insurance payment every month, no matter how many miles you drive, really comes in handy when you don't make a whole lot of money for that month. My, my insurance payment is only $800 this month. And that's pretty cheap for a new authority in Florida. Um, so yeah, shout out to uh, the Canal Insurance Test Drive Program. If anybody's looking for an insurance company, I would definitely recommend them. All the uh, dealings that I've had with them, were, they're great people, they you know, personable, good customer service, and like I said, the, the cost is, is pretty damn good. They were the cheapest one I found, because it's really hard to get truck insurance in Florida. A lot of companies won't even touch you. I think when I did a Progressive, they quoted me like $14,000 down and like $45,000 for the year. So, yeah, that was outrageous. Canal quoted me like $3,600 down. And they say with the test drive program, if you drive a lot of miles, you'll probably average about $1,600 a month. Well, this past month, it's not like I sat at home for the whole month and my, my bill is only $800. So, yeah, I can't recommend them enough. So, yes, uh, recommend Canal Insurance. Do not recommend OTR Leasing. Y'all know what I've gone through with those assholes. But let's hope they uh, put me in a door here soon and get me unloaded so I can go get something to eat. I'm starving. And uh, I'll check in with you later and let you know how it went. And we're back. Well, that was a very interesting situation. Um, I was at the Chet Pallet Warehouse in Jacksonville. There's that curtain here. And uh, after sitting there for a couple of hours, they came out and told everybody that was sitting there waiting that the warehouse is completely full of pallets. They have no room to receive any more pallets. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So, they said they didn't schedule enough outbound loads 
for all the inbound loads that they had, so they ran out of room. They think they have enough outbound loads scheduled for the second shift. I don't know what happened, but it looked like the camera just quit recording for some reason. But anyway, um, they think they'll be able to get it unloaded tonight, but because I started my day in South Florida and drove all the way up to Jacksonville and then sat there for a few hours, I, I had to tell them, look, I don't have the hours available. You guys don't let people spend the night here. So I can't sit here and then be out of hours by the time you get around to unloading me. So what, you know, what can we do? I'm like, do we need to reschedule this? I'll call, I'll call Convoy, have them reschedule this for tomorrow, and I'll just come back tomorrow because I live here in Jacksonville. And the guy was like, yeah, that, that sounds okay. Let me, you know, go ahead and try that. So I call Convoy, let them know what's going on, see if they can reschedule the delivery for tomorrow. And in the meantime, I get a text message saying to go ahead and back into door 22. So I'm like, wait a minute, this doesn't add up. So I go in and talk to the receiving clerk. And, you know, I said, hey, they just came out and told us they weren't going to be unloading us anytime soon. And then I get a text message saying to drop a trailer in door 22 and then bobtail over to the parking area. She's like, yeah, they're just getting everything lined up and ready for tonight, hopefully, to unload it tonight. Um, nothing has changed. You're still not going to get unloaded anytime soon. I'm like, okay, well, I have a problem. I'm going to be out of hours before it gets unloaded, I'm sure. So... And I explained to her, I live here in Jacksonville. Can I drop the trailer in the door? You guys work on it tonight, get it unloaded, and then I come back tomorrow and pick it up when it's empty. And she's like, well, Convoy doesn't have an agreement to drop trailers here. I'm like, it's not like a drop, permanent drop. I'm just dropping it for the night so you guys can work the stuff out of it, and I'll go home and sleep in my own bed and come back tomorrow and pick it up. She's like, yeah, I guess that would be okay. Let me just go check with the manager. And so she walks out of the room and goes into another office and comes back. And she's like, yeah, that's fine. As long as you come back and grab it tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, I got to get paid for this load. So that's the only way I'm going to get paid is if I come back and pick up this trailer. So I dropped the trailer in door 22 and bobtailed over here to the yard where I parked my truck and then I'm going home after I get myself something to eat because I'm starving to death. Um, so it all worked out pretty good. I'll get detention pay and layover pay and I'll get paid for sitting at, at my own house. So that works out for me. I'm happy. But that's about it. Um, I'll let you all know what happens tomorrow, but I'm going to probably upload this part of the video when I get home, and then I'll just continue on the next day and do a new video. Talk to you all later.